Welcome back. <clears throat> okay, podcast four looks at um, the famous meeting at the at the house of the Cologne banker, Kurt von Schroeder, on the 4th of January 1933, a meeting that is commonly, um, well, that, that has been quoted very famously by the German historian Karl Dietrich Bracker as, quote, the hour of the birth of the Third Reich, um, unquote. Now, to understand this meeting, I think it would just be useful to backtrack um, just over a month to November 1932 and just quickly run through the sort of circumstances um, surrounding the fall of von Papen, um, Schleicher's plan, and then the fall of Schleicher. Okay, so we can sort of understand... Um, the circumstances around this. So what I've drawn here is a little diagram um, and it's now November 1932. Von Papen was Chancellor um, but let's first of all just look at the Reichstag elections of November 1932 and we're trying to sort of like view this from the point of view of Sch um, Schleicher, um, the sort of kingmaker, the man who has always been creeping in the shadows, conspiring um, he was the man who recommended Bruning as Chancellor back in 1930 um, and he conspired um, behind the scenes to remove Bruning and to appoint von Papen in the summer of 1932 as Chancellor and now he is conspiring to remove von Papen so let's just understand why well if first of all we look at the Reichstag elections of November 1932 the key thing to understand is you've got two big political parties. You've got the Nazis on the extreme right and you've got the Communists on the extreme left. Now between those two parties, and they're the, 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 the two main opposition parties, they're on the poles, they're not in the, in the middle, they're extreme parties. Between them they command more than half the seats in the Reichstag. The parties in the middle, the pro-Republican parties, um, between them command very, very little, few seats. So the extreme parties are taking a position of opposition to the Republic. They don't want the Republic to work, so they're not cooperating inside the Reichstag. Um, our friend von Papen, of course, fully understands that. And so, of course, did Bruning before him. And that is why, um, since 1930, with what, what we call polarisation, um, for lawmaking to exist, lawmaking has basically fallen into the hands of a small group of men at the top. That's the only way to pass laws, because the Reichstag will not cooperate. Now, after two and a half years of this, of course, increasingly those two parties um, who are excluded, who dominate the Reichstag, are taking out their... Um, their, their um, hostility towards each other in street violence on the streets. Um, there's no point in um, doing it through the Reichstag because the Reichstag is not part of government making anymore. Now that situation is of concern to General Schleicher because he basically is looking at this cabinet uh, that he was instrumental in creating, the, and he is saying it is a cabinet of the barons. It is out of touch with the people because it is out of touch. Because government is government of a few men, um, of a nation of uh, nearly sixty million people. Um, increasingly, we find we we have a situation where um, the, the the government lacks popularity. Uh, and we're losing control of the streets. And in a situation where we're losing control of the streets, it is the army's job to take control over the streets. And Schleicher is increasingly feeling um, that what could happen is you could basically have a civil war situation, um, effectively with the Nazis versus the communists, with the army caught in the middle trying to basically restore order. And Schleicher's major worry was that there could be foreign intervention, actually from the Poles. He believed that Poland could actually, uh, might actually take advantage of the chaos in such a situation to invade Germany and take land for herself. So that's the background as to why Schleicher effectively announced to Hindenburg that he no longer had confidence in von Papen as Chancellor. And, he, and as a result, Hindenburg had to dismiss von Papen. And that's what happened 
beginning of December 1932. Now, of course, as you know, Schleicher's plan, and he had a he had a plan in, up his sleeve, and basically his plan was um, that he believed he could create a cabinet. So he is there now as the chancellor. That is not a cabinet of the barons. It is actually a cabinet that has support within the Reichstag. And he basically believed he could do that by splitting the Nazi party, driving a wedge between it, and Hitler's um, wing, effectively, um, would be isolated from the Stresser wing. Um, and effectively, uh, the party would break into two, and the Stresser wing of the party, which I've just highlighted there, um, would then support Schleicher as Chancellor, and so Schleicher as Chancellor would be able to form a broad coalition that would include the Strasser faction of the Nazis on the extreme right, it would include the right-wing elements of the Social Democrats, um, and it would include the Centre Party, and it would include the German Nationalist Party. Now, if uh, Strasser had accepted that proposal, um, it is quite possible that Schleicher could have actually formed a cabinet that had a degree of support inside the Reichstag, and he therefore could have run the country as a parliamentary chancellor rather than a presidential chancellor. That certainly was his proposal. But, of course, it didn't work. As we know, the Strasser faction, or Strasser, did not accept the plan. He went off on holiday to Italy, and so, basically, Schleicher found himself back at square one. He could only run the country as a presidential chancellor. And effectively, that put him in exactly the same situation as von Papen had been um, a few weeks earlier. Um, the only way you can run the country is, is running the country with the support of the president, passing laws by presidential decree. And so what Schleicher had argued was a risk, the risk of a civil war continues to be a risk. OK, um, he is a chancellor without popular support. And of course, von Papen, who has been forced out um, by Schleicher, is looking at this thinking, well, I was forced out for no reason at all, because basically Schleicher is now running the country exactly the same way as I was running the country. Um, now, as we know, von Papen's plan had been to effectively run the country without involving the Reichstag at all. So where does this actually leave von Papen? Well, basically it left von Papen wanting revenge. He wanted to find a way to oust Schleicher from the Chancellorship. Now, as we know, on the 16th of December, von Papen basically spoke with the Gentlemen's Club in Berlin um, and... Um, made it very clear that he was now an enemy of Schleicher and he wanted to force Schleicher out. Now, the end of December, as we move into the last weeks of December, the beginning of January, a lot of it is conjecture. What we do know is this. Uh, there was a banker, Kurt von Schroeder from Cologne, at the Gentlemen's Club, who listened to von Papen's speech. Um, and von Papen um, had clearly said, we need to bring Hitler into government. Uh, we need to make him responsible. The, 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 the only solution to Germany's problem, something that we have um, been shirking from for, um, for all this time, is actually making Hitler chancellor. Um, up until now, we've considered making him chancellor um, of a coalition government, um, and Hitler has always refused, saying he wants he will not be part of a coalition. So if we can find a way of persuading him to be a chancellor of a coalition government, that's half the battle won. The other half of the battle, of course, is to persuade Hindenburg himself. Now Hindenburg, as we know, has had constant doubts about Hitler. So we need to convince Hindenburg that if we bring Hitler in as, le as, as leader of a coalition government, that the Nazis will act responsibly. The, obviously the argument is... If we can bring Hitler in as the Chancellor of a coalition government, we will actually have a government that can pass laws through Parliament rather than by presidential decree. That will minimise the risk of civil war because effectively 
um, we will have a chancellor that will have a broad basis of popular support on the streets. The Nazis, after all, um, did control a third of the vote. Um, so it's like harnessing that energy it will minimise the risk of civil war and it will be a way of bringing the Nazis into government. So that basically was the, the, the proposal that uh, von Papen had spoken about at the Gentlemen's Club. Um, what we do know is that Schroeder then left the club um, and through various intermediaries, probably um, Himmler, the leader of the SS and Hitler's economic advisor, Kepler, um, a meeting was set up um, on the 4th of January at the house of Schroeder. It was a secret meeting, although it actually became very, very public. Um, Schleicher had his, conf has, has had his informers um, and there was actually um, a man with a camera there who even took a photograph of, the, of them arriving at the meeting. We don't know the precise details of what was discussed in that meeting. Um, most historians do, however, believe that, that at that meeting von Papen met Hitler and made a deal with Hitler. He said, I will persuade Hindenburg to make you Chancellor, but in return you have to agree that I will be your Vice-Chancellor, and that if I was your Vice-Chancellor you will have to agree that I will always be allowed to be present at any meeting that you have with um, Hindenburg, with the President. Now, all of this is that basically um, the Nazis or Hitler left that meeting visibly in high spirits. Okay, as we know, until that point, Hitler had been very low, um, trapped in the cul-de-sac, and he left the meeting visibly buoyed and um, uh, quite um, upbeat. So clearly a, a deal had been given to Hitler that he felt he could respond to. Um, there still remained a lot that had to be discussed. Okay, the, the, clearly there would have to be negotiations about the type of coalition cabinet, um, but the basic view is, and certainly the historian Karl Dietrich Bracher um, argues that that was the point, that was the deal, that was the moment at which the plan was hatched, and which Hitler was brought into a plan um, to make him Chancellor, and it happened on the 4th of January 1932.